uh, we're going to talk with someone I met a while ago, and I was very impressed. Phyllis Mitchell. Good afternoon. Welcome to Let's Talk. Good afternoon, Andy. Thank you for having me. Okay, we uh, tried to arrange this a while ago. It just yeah. took a while to get together. Yeah. And um, so, what are we gonna, going to talk with uh, well, Phyllis about? So, Phyllis mm. is a medium and a tarot card reader, mm -hmm. among other things, as we <laughs> found out. Yes. Um, her website is readings by Phyllis. Uh, P H Y L L I S readings mm. by Phyllis, and you can get more information about her and the the cool things that she does. And she also has a really neat Instagram page, readings by Phyllis as well, mm -hmm. all one word. So we were going to ask Phyllis all about her special ability and being a medium. And I must say, this is a little different from uh, we had the mind reader. Or, yes. um Oh, I'm trying to remember his name. Tom Kennedy, Tom Kennedy. Tom Kennedy. And he mm -hmm. he was a not a uh, I forget what his um, name was. Yeah, what uh, his title I forgot. Well, it's, mm -hmm. as a mind reader it's different different from what you do, right. Phyllis. Yeah. So um, tell us what a medium is and how you came to know that you had the skill. Well, I'll tell you what a medium for me is. Basically, I get messages from people who have passed away. Um I can, it's not basically, they don't talk to me, but I get thoughts from them. And then I relay the messages to the person I, you know, I'm speaking to a client that I'm speaking with. But how I do it most of the time is I'll get the messages and I'll start typing them. And then I'll type and I'll talk to the client, type and I'll talk to the client. And then when I'm finished, uh, within a day or two, I will email what I've typed to the client so they can have it as a keepsake. They don't have to worry about remembering it and they can always go back periodically and look at what was written, the messages that were sent for them. So that's how I do it. But my mm -hmm. means of communication is uh, getting messages in my mind. I get them and then I um, type them and give them to the so client. So are there rules? Does the person have to be next to you in order for you to get the messages? Actually not. Um, it's a good segue into how it kind of first started where I realized my ability. Um, I didn't realize my ability um, for mediumship until really only about two and a half years or so. Um, I was always fascinated with uh, psychic ability. My grandmother uh, read tarot cards and tea leaves, and my mother and my sister were always uh, fascinated, and they always had people come to our house, and we would go and see people, um, you know, but I never thought I could actually do this. I would actually go to people, although I always seemed to have some intuition. I would have dreams of people that have passed away. Um, I ended up becoming an accountant, so that was my profession, but... Um, you know, lo and behold, uh, I used to go to take different classes on intuition, and I happened to take one class on tarot card reading, and I thought, oh, it would just be for fun. So I went, and um, the teacher was great. Uh, she paired us up with uh, strangers, and she said, you know, just go and start, you know, practicing using um, the cards and starting to read and see if anything comes to you. So I, um, you know, looked at the cards, the woman across from me shuffled, and I looked at her cards, and I started to get messages in my mind, and I'm thinking, oh, well, this is just a story I'm making up in my mind, and I start telling her, and the woman starts to cry because she says, oh my gosh, you're explaining exactly what's going on with my son and my daughter and with myself. So I was really shocked. I said, really? That, that really made sense to you? Because in my mind, I'm thinking I'm just making up a story. But in fact, it wasn't. I was getting messages to give to her. So that's what kind of started things. So what I did was we, you know, I practiced on family and friends. And then I started to um, actually, uh, you know, perform my services uh, for clients. And that was just tarot card reading. Um, so I did that for maybe about three to four years. And then, um, sadly, my sister got sick. She um, ended up having leukemia, and um, sadly, she passed away. So I was really devastated, and I was actually very desperate to go and see a medium because I really want to uh, connect with my sister. Mm -hmm. So um, I did actually find a medium who I thought was excellent. Her name is Gina Canone. Um, I felt she definitely connected me with my sister. Uh, Gina had written a book, and it was on automatic writing. And for some reason, I was just kind of drawn to the book. So I bought the book, and I read the book. And, um, you know, I was impressed with it. And then maybe a couple days later, um, my son plays baseball, so I was just waiting for him to finish practice, and some of the parents were talking. 
And um, they started to talk about this uh, one boy in town who, uh, you know, was a very good athlete. And um, they were saying how, oh, he didn't play, you know, in the playoffs. And I said, wow, why not? You know, he's like one of the best athletes. And they said, oh, we got into a little bit of trouble. And they uh, made him, you know, sit on the bench. Wow. So for some reason, it stuck with me. I, I felt sorry for the boy. And, um, you know, I went to bed that night. And I woke up the next morning. And he's on my mind, this boy. So I wrote his name down on a piece of paper. Just something made me do it. And I just started to write. And then I wrote and I wrote and I wrote. And I ended up writing four pages. Wow. And I realized that. This, well, I knew that the boy's father had passed away when he was, you know, much younger. So I realized that these messages were coming from this boy's father and that this boy's father wanted me to give him these messages because he really wanted to help his son kind of get back on the right track. Right. But the problem was I didn't know him personally. So now I had a dilemma. What should I do? But it came to me that I just had to go and see this boy. So, yes, believe it or not, I walked up to the boy's house and something in my mind, I feel it was uh, the dad telling me that, um, you know, go and talk to the boy and ask for his mom. So that's what I did. I said, oh, hi, you know, is your mom home? So uh, he said, yeah. And he went and he got her. I thought, wow, that was easy. He didn't ask if okay. you were selling Girl Scout cookies no, or no, something. No, he just like accepted. woman at my door? Yeah. Right. He mm -hmm. just accepted that, you know, I guess that, uh, you know, oh. I, she must know my mom. Mm. So then the mom came out, and now I'm thinking, oh, boy, what do I do next? But then I'm getting this message saying, um, you have someone in common. She knows her, and you know her. And I'm like, oh, that's right. And I said, oh, you know so-and-so. Mm. And she said, yes. I said, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. And, you know, did she ever talk about this woman who, uh, you know, donates her time to the rest home? She said, oh, yeah. I said, oh, well, I'm that woman. So now, you know, now we know okay. about this one in common. Mm. And then um, I said, okay. I said, I feel that, um, you know, I have uh, messages uh, for your son from your husband. I wrote them. Here they are, and I'd like to read them to you. So I kind of hesitated just to wait for her reaction to see because it could have gone a lot of different ways. <laughs> right. But luckily, she said, I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, mm. this is great. Mm -hmm. So I started to read what I had written. And I started to cry because sometimes I do get very emotional from the messages. And then she started to cry. And then the boy started to cry. And then her older son came out and said, Mom, what's going on? Everyone's crying here. What's <laughs> happening? And she said, oh, my gosh, this woman has messages from Daddy. So um, there were validations for the younger son. And, um, you know, at the end, she said, can I please have what you wrote? And I said, wow, my handwriting's really terrible. So can I please go home and I'll type them and I will give them to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And I have since gotten messages um, from her husband, you know, for her son and for herself mm -hmm. and so on. But I feel so blessed that he came to me to, um, you know, be the one to relay the messages. So he's the one that actually allowed me to realize that I do have this ability of right. connecting with people who have passed away. And since then, I've been giving uh, many messages to people, um, you know, from their loved ones. But I feel it's it's really needed. They they definitely want to give messages, and um, the people who are receiving them mm -hmm. truly benefit from the messages. And you felt right. the son benefited from the messages. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I truly feel that he did. Yeah. Mm. And you mentioned yeah. that your family members had also had this skill. Your Was it your mother or your my, grandmother? My grandmother could read um, tea leaves and tarot cards. I don't know if she actually did medium uh, ship. Uh, I never heard my mom or my sister mention that she did, and uh, she passed away when I was only four years old. So I think she was more a tarot card reader and a tea leaf reader. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And growing up, and, and I'm sorry, your mother? Yeah. No. And, and my mother was intuitive, but she never really did anything, you know, with it. My dad, though, used to have um, dreams of his um, brother that passed away when he was only 16. And his brother would come to him in dreams and give him different messages. So mm. I feel on both sides of my family, on my mother's right. side and my father, wow. that, you know, intuition, um, you know, and psychic ability uh, was there. Mm -hmm. So to yeah. have this talent come to you... Um, 
later in life. Right. It's later in life. Right. Though. Although yeah. you're very young. No, no, I'm not actually. But, um, <laughs> She's, way, she's very young. <laughs> no, I'm not actually. Uh, you know, so I, I wonder to myself, well, why didn't I get this ability earlier in my life? Most right. people, you know, they're young and they know it and they're mm -hmm. usually young that have this ability. But I try to think about it and I think maybe I was just too caught up in, you know, working and raising my children and things like that. So I didn't have the time maybe to focus. And now that uh, my youngest son is 15 um, and my, you know, oldest son will be 21, I have more time now, I think, to actually focus on this ability. Hmm. So is it is it ever scary? Do you ever get messages that are scary? Um, not actually scary, but there are messages that are true warnings, especially sometimes about um, uh, maybe I'll read a client and maybe one of their loved ones, uh, their health, you know, that they need to go to is the in doctor. Is in jeopardy. Maybe, yeah, definitely don't put it off. You need to go to the doctor mm -hmm. or the things like that. Yeah. Okay, but nothing, you know, as Halloween uh, is around the corner. Yeah, no, nothing spooky or scary. No, or, nothing yeah. really spooky or, or scary, really. It's just um, true messages that need, I feel, to be heard, um, you know, by the client for, uh, you know, a variety of reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there was a movie a, a while ago with, um, it was called Bruce Almighty, mm -hmm. and, and he was chastising God. God. And so God said, okay, you think you can do it better, buddy? Like you have all my power. I'm going to take a vacation. And he would get these messages nonstop. Messages, messages, Is right. it like that yeah. where you're bombarded? No, luckily for me, I don't get bombarded with messages. Most of the time I don't get messages unless I'm trying to pick up for the messages. But every once in a while, and mm -hmm. Andy is a case in point, mm -hmm. I will, uh, someone, uh, you know, uh, will connect with me when I'm not really trying, um, and they really want a message to get through. Mm -hmm. And that happened with Andy. And that happened yes. with Andy. Yes, it did. <laughs> just in July or August sometime. Yeah, at it was at, at a pool party, uh, right. With her neighbors who were friends right. of mm -hmm. my honey, Diane, and, and yeah. we never met each other. We just started yapping, and, and yeah. all of a sudden she was telling me all about things. And, that, yeah, know. and I said, wow, your wife passed away, and I, I well, can I say yeah, that? Yeah. And I said, gee, you know, I feel she picked um, the woman he was dating mm. uh, because she's a lot like her, the woman that had passed away. And she really, you know, thought it would be a good match for him because she, you know, yeah. this woman <laughs> is similar to her. And the first thing I said was, why did she wait eight and a half years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and everything. After I, she passed away. Everything's yeah. due to timing, <laughs> right, right? Exactly. It has to be the right time. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How yeah. about it? Yeah. yeah. So how does your family feel about this new, because you've been, professionally doing this now for two and a half years did you uh, say for mediumship um for a tarot card it's been longer okay yeah reading the tarot cards yeah, so how did your longer. your family i have take to it? i say um my husband be, has been very supportive right from the start which i you know i feel so blessed um that you know because this is a little out of his comfort zone but you know he knows i'm a very honest person and he knows i i love to help people so right away he was just very supportive mm -hmm. um you know, my sons are supportive, too. Uh, my older son is still on the fence, whether he truly believes. Um, but my younger one um, is more, I think, of a believer. And I think uh, he has some abilities, but he's still young yet. Oh. Mm -hmm. So how do you know? So, what has he exhibited well, that makes you well, think that? Yeah. Um, well, not, you don't have to get personal. Of, part of me is just um, some of my intuition I get from just knowing. Um, but he's uh, demonstrated one or two times um, that's something that, uh, well, uh, let me put it this way. I think he's seen my sister that has passed away. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he does get feelings sometimes about people. Gotcha. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so. so one of the things that we talked about in our pre-interview yes. was the connection between what you do and religion. And yes. are they incompatible? I, I feel not, um, you know, I was raised Catholic, and I know a lot of Catholics do have an issue with this um, because they, I, I guess they feel it's going against God or it's uh, the work of the devil or something like that. But I, you know, and everyone truly is entitled to their own opinion, I feel, and I'm not trying to change anyone's beliefs. But from my perspective, I'll share with you is that I feel, um, and I'm not, so well read with the Bible, but um, in the Bible, uh, the, it does speak about people who, um, you know, uh, had dreams of things that came out, and, um, you know, they had people that could see the future. So I, I don't understand why, 
you know, people, you know, like us who can see things of future or get messages, um, why, you know, we're kind of chastised for that because uh, there are examples in the Bible. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and I truly feel in my heart, um, you know, I believe wholeheartedly in God, and I feel it's a God-given gift. I feel God gave that this gift to me, so I can, in fact, help other people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had gone down to Gettysburg in mm -hmm. this year and did the Ghost of Gettysburg mm -hmm. tour, and if there's one, I mean, believe in ghosts or not, but mm -hmm. that place is truly mm -hmm. there's a lot of spiritual stuff going on there right. and i always thought that the belief in spirits good or bad right. tell you the existence of god in my opinion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think it, it kind of it works together it works together i i really feel that yeah yeah, yeah I um, so and we also talked a little bit about free will and so yes that concept which is really big in catholicism 16 years, 16 years of Catholic school here. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah. That that's a real big part of uh, what you do. Can you explain that? With how it works? With the free will, I'll say, and especially with, um, you know, the tarot cards, when I'm doing tarot cards, you know, I might see a certain path for you, right? But um, maybe down the road, it doesn't come out exactly as what I had said. Um, and people will say, oh, well, she was just wrong. She didn't know what she was talking about. But I do feel that free will does come into play. So even though there might be a, a likely situation that might happen, your free will may allow you to take another path. Right. So mm -hmm. that's how I can explain it. Right. So it's definitely yeah. a big part of it. Yeah, yes, I, I do feel it's a combination of we have paths that we can follow, but we do have free will also. Mm -hmm. We're speaking with Phyllis Mitchell, uh, medium and tarot card reading reader. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you can call 609-397-1620, extension 5, or shoot us an email at wdbrhost at comcast.net. Uh, okay, now I have, I have a question that you mentioned two different things. Mm -hmm. Okay, your work as a medium and tarot card reading. What's the difference? Explain, oh, can you explain uh, each? Thank you. Yes, thank you for that question because I get that question a lot. I okay. say, oh, do you want a medium reading or a tarot card right. reading? She goes, oh, can you explain the difference? <laughs> yeah, so um, medium is basically um, connecting with people that have passed away. Right. I will get messages from people that have passed away and mm -hmm. then I will relay the messages uh, to the client. Tarot card reading is um, more, uh, you know, the client will pick the cards and then I basically look and I do get messages uh, from the cards, but it's more related to, um, you know, present or uh, future things that will be going on. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say sometimes, um, not the, ma the majority of times, but sometimes when I am doing a tarot card reading, I will get messages from people that have passed away. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So how's business? Is it, are you busy? <laughs> business? Well, I feel because I'm still relatively new mm -hmm. in the business, I feel it's still taking me time uh, to build up a clientele. Um, right now it has increased, which is a great thing. Um, but I feel the more that I guess um, people know about me, then the more um, business I'll uh be able to get. Mm -hmm. That's great. And are you still doing accounting on the side? I still do taxes. <laughs> yes, I do at tax time. Yes. <laughs> okay. So do you want your taxes done and have a reading? I know. I'm only kidding. <laughs> do they ever work hand in hand where you tell people do not take this deduction? <laughs> it's not a good idea. Well, um, I have to say, my intuition doesn't tell me that. It's my logic that there tells me go. about the taxes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I can definitely pick up something about a client and maybe the personality. But right. um, when it comes to taxes, it's all logic. Yeah. Do, you, do you find they're exclusive, the, the talents? Because the one skill with the medium and tarot card reading sounds more creative. And right. the accounting is more... Logic-based logic -based and based. black and white. Yeah. Right, but I, I feel, though, that... Um, you know, they can coexist. Uh, you know, sometimes people think, well, she can only be an accountant. How could she possibly, you know, do these other things? That, that can't be possible. But people are multifaceted. So I think, you know, um, that's something to think about. We, we have a creative side and, you know, say a logical side, and they do coexist. And once in a while, they do cross over. I do have tax clients that come to me and do, uh, you know, get some readings. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know. 
Uh, hmm. They can coexist, definitely. Okay. Do you feel also, um, and again, that this kind of really rela relates to me too, that people do get signs, but people don't see them. They don't, or they don't want to see them or something. That's a great, great point. Yes, mm -hmm. I feel that um, our loved ones that have crossed um, definitely send us a lot of signs. Mm -hmm. And you have to be, I think, more on the lookout for them, and you have to be open to them. Uh, because sometimes they'll send you signs and then you just don't realize that they're sending you signs. And then the more open that you are to it, right. um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's there. Because I know okay. I get feathers from my father. I get dimes from my mother, um, oh my, my sister. Goodness. Yeah, my, my mother-in-law, you know, gives me quarters. I see uh, a cardinal. My sister sends me cardinals too. My father sends me blue oh, okay. jays. There are a lot of different mm -hmm. signs that I know relate to a particular uh, right. person that's passed away. But it's right. just a knowing. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of signs that come out. Yeah, because I think I mentioned that to you in the yeah. summer when we met. Right. Because there was a, a young guy that I worked with, maybe a good 10, 15 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. Very close to his mother. Right. Took care of his mother till she passed away young uh, of right. cancer. He says, I was so close to her. I never got any signs from her. How come? And I, I told yeah. him about this yeah. thing that happened with right. my late wife, the Evie Light. Right. Yeah. And a lot of different things. Something with my sister-in-law that happened once. And he goes, how come I never saw any of this stuff? How come I was so close to my mother? I've never heard anything that could be a sign for my mother. And it's just... It and me. I feel he needs to be more open. And a lot mm -hmm. of times, too, with electricity, they can manipulate electricity. Right. So um, lights. Heard that. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. lights or the TV or mm -hmm. um, even the radio. You know, okay. um, yeah, it could do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. See, so it depends on the person's... Uh, yeah, so they should just be more open to it, I feel. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're speaking with... with it so we're with Phyllis Mitchell. Thanks for staying with us. Oh, thank you for having me. And she's telling us all about her skills as a medium and a tarot card reader. We want to mention her website again. We've had a question on our email to our the hosts here asking how folks can make an appointment with Phyllis. Yes, please go to my website, readingsbyphyllis.com. And you can go to the message section and just um, message me, email me, and I will get back to you within a day and we can set up an appointment. Terrific. And while we're on that subject, let's talk about some of the things that are coming up. You said you had a couple of classes as well that you Yes, do. actually tomorrow night I'll be teaching an intuition class and it will be held at New Earth Community Center. And that's at 132 Main Street in Manasquan. And tomorrow night, it's from 7 to 8.30. Is that information also on your website? Yes. If you go to the calendar section, my events, you'll see um, I will be there. I'll be doing readings there also uh, this coming Friday night from 5 to 8. And my brother-in-law actually does tarot cards, and he will be with me. He's excellent, too. Oh, wow. Is that your yeah. husband's brother or your brother? Actually, it's my sister's. <laughs> um, my sister that passed away, it's her husband. How about it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Great. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. your class is, um, is it a one-night class? Uh, the intu intuition uh, class tomorrow night is just one night. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Is it an hour long? Or? Uh, it's 7 to 8.30. It's an hour and a half. 7 to 8.30. Yeah. And people can sign up for that on your website? Uh, no, they can go to New Earth Community Center and sign up through them. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a menace mm -hmm. one. Because yeah. that sounds fun, an intuition, intuition class. Intuition class is very interesting. Yeah, and we do some exercises and we talk about the different clairs and things like that. So that should help pretty interesting. enhance your intuition. Enhance your intuition. intuition. Well, learn a little bit more about your intuition and enhance it, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This this uh, begs the question. <laughs> they talk about women's intuition. And yes, the women's there we go. Women's is intuition. It, is it true that there are more female mediums than men or do you think um, that's really a thing or? i don't honestly have the statistics but mm -hmm. my guess my mm -hmm. intuition would be telling <laughs> okay. me that yes i feel that uh there are probably more women mm -hmm. and i do find um there are more women that are clients as opposed to men okay. um right. i just feel that maybe women are a little bit more open-minded men are more skeptical um, about yeah. it they're a little more skeptical mm -hmm. um, but the men that do come i do find especially with the medium readings they're quite emotional mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I want to ask you about your okay. skeptic, but before we get there, yeah, tell us about the charity event that you are participating in. Yes, yeah, so we, uh, I am participating in a charity event. Um, it's a psychic fair. It will be held on November 3rd, and the location is All Fur Paws Animal Hospital. The address mm. is 34 Trenton Lakewood Road in Millstone Township. Um, and there's going to be, there are going to be other psychics there. 
Um, there's going to be pet and human Reiki, animal communication, uh, yes, mediums and psychic readings, uh, tarot and angel cards. Um, it, all the, well, part of the donations go to All Paws on Board, Inc. And, uh, you know, they're a nonprofit that handles, um, you know, rescuing of cats and dogs and, you know, taking care of them, too. Mm. So if you'd like to register, you could go, you could call either 732-682-7721 or go to um, one of our excellent mediums and psychics and Reiki Masters is Jeff, and um, he also is taking um, appointments at www.dimensionsreiki.com. And then you'll on his website, you'll see the All Paws Psychic uh, Benefit. And you can go on and click on who you would like to have a reading with and schedule your appointment. And it's really going for a good cause. So I, I hope uh, animal lovers will um, come out and support a good cause. That's really neat. Okay, so in the time we had left, we had another question come through yes. that I want to ask, but also... Uh, the, the skeptic story is a good story. But yes, before, okay. the the question is, can you read everyone? Um, the question is, can I read everyone? No, I cannot read everyone with mediumship. Um, if there isn't um, a past loved one there, then I have nothing to go on because I rely on the loved one to come through to me to give me the messages that I can pass along. So if no one's there, I, I can't pass along a message. Okay. Uh, with the tarot card readings, it's different. I can pick up because I'm basically looking at a person's uh, present and future, um, and I get kind of regular intuition messages. But for mediumship, if, uh, yeah, no, I'll call it spirit, is there for the person, then I, I can't read for them. Okay. And then you did have a skeptic once that you I told did, me about. Yeah, I did have a skeptic, uh, a man, and he came in, and he only came because his girlfriend made him, uh, you know, come in to get a reading. <laughs> okay. And he told me flat out from the start, and I, yeah. I appreciated his honesty. Mm -hmm. And um, I started to talk to him about his uncle who had passed away. And um, I said, wow, you know, uh, your uncle said uh, he was very much into boating. And he said, oh, no, you know, that's not true. I said, well, that's what, you know, I'm getting. And, um, you know, and then I said, wow, uh, your uncle's saying that he and your mom were like two peas in a pot. He said, well, okay, I'll give you that because they were twins. All right. <laughs> and then I said, wow, that your counts. uncle, yeah, yeah, your uncle's tell me that he really likes shoes. He was really into shoes. He goes, oh, I didn't know anything about that. And I said, okay, well, you know, I'm really getting from your uncle that um, please talk to your mom about these things that are coming through, these messages he's giving, and see if she can validate anything. So he said, oh, okay, well, he kind of was upset because um, after, you know, our reading, he said, you know, I'm a pilot and my uncle was a pilot and he, you know, if it was him, he would have come through and said that he was a pilot and he didn't. So I'm very still skeptical. I said, okay, you know, so he actually, I have to give him a lot of credit because he ended up emailing me about a week later and he said, I did in fact go and talk to my mom and, you know, she read everything that, um, you know, you had written and that we talked about. And she said, yes, in fact, my uncle did get um, his commercial uh, boating license, which mm. this man didn't know anything about. Okay. Okay, because he always knew him as a pilot. He didn't know mm. later on in life that he did get that. And then she said that, yes, in fact, he did like shoes a lot. And right before he passed away, we were talking about these particular shoes he, that he had bought. And she said, you know, I didn't really care for them that much, but I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I said, oh, that's nice. But he absolutely loved these <laughs> shoes. So the man did say, I must say that, you know, my mother validated, you know, uh, a couple of things that you said. So he goes, I'm a little bit more believing, but I'm still a skeptic. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll take that. Right. <laughs> okay. Go. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And you mentioned another um, instant instance when you were at the uh, beauty salon. Oh, that, that was interesting. Yes, that was funny. So, okay. I was at um, a beauty salon and this was my first time there. So I'm sitting there, I'm getting color. You know, I'm sitting there with all the color on my hair and this woman next to me had color on her hair. And I hear a message that ask her why she's here so soon. And I'm like, what? And then I'm like, I know it's somebody, you know, that's related to her. Ask her why she's here so soon. I'm thinking, oh, you know, this is my first time here at the beauty parlor. I don't want to start saying these things or, you know, they don't know me. But the woman was persistent. So 
I'm like, okay, this message must need to, you know, be uh, brought through. Mm. So I said to the woman next to me, I said, oh, excuse me. I said, are you here like sooner than you normally come, you know, to get your color? She said, well, that's strange that you asked because, yes, I normally come every six weeks, but it's my third week. And she said, I came because, you know, we're going to a family reunion in Florida. And, um, you know, I'm only on my third week, but I wanted my mm. roots to look good. So that's why I wanted <laughs> to come earlier. I said, oh, okay. So she looks at me and she says, well, why do you ask? And I said, well, this might sound a little bit strange. I said, but I feel your grandmother's here. And she wanted me to ask you that. And I feel she has a message for you. So the woman looked at me. She said, oh, she said, I loved my grandmother so much. I miss her so much. She said, we were so close. She said, I want to believe you, but I'm Catholic and the church doesn't allow us to believe in these things. Mm. She said, so I'm really kind of torn because I, I really would love to believe that, you know, you, you're getting messages from my grandmother. So... <laughs> In my mind, you know, sometimes I do get visions. Most of the time it's messages, but I'll get visions sometimes too. I can see, and not to be stereotypical, but I see this little woman, you know, all in black, stirring this pot of all cold gravy, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this pot of gravy, tomato sauce, you might say. And she heard her granddaughter say that. And I will kind of paraphrase what, yes, um, get the red what her grandmother, <laughs> Andy, what her grandmother yes. said. So the grandmother said, and told me to, well, you know, gave me the message to tell this woman. Ah, and she said um, a swear word. It begins with the letter F, and it was in Italian. She said, ah, all right, blank, mm -hmm. <laughs> the church. I'm the one talking. You've got to believe me. <laughs> and the woman replied, that's my grandmother. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Very so that was pretty funny. So that was one instance where I wasn't looking for her, but she definitely was persistent and came through. And does mm. that happen often? Uh, not too often, I have to say. It's usually, you know, when I kind of go into my zone and I'm trying to connect, and it will. But every once in a while, I think I have someone who's pretty persistent and really wants that message to come through. And That's then neat. I'll give it. And, and I think the woman felt a lot better, you know, because now mm. she felt better. Her grandmother, you know, was speaking, right. you know, almost directly to her, and now she felt mm. better about believing it. Neat. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Phyllis Mitchell. And um, you and Claudine are going to have a little chat. Yes, I'm going to read for mm -hmm. Claudine. Okay. Off yes. the air. Off, Off the air. air. Yeah. Off the and, air. And then I'll come um, back and report. Yeah, yes. you can report later or whatever. That's good. Yes. And um, and that's readings right. by Phyllis dot com. Right. If you'd like more information mm -hmm. about Phyllis and would right. like a reading or a tarot card reading or a yes. medium reading. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah. you mentioned Barb sent an email. Yes. And that does. Yeah, yes. So, uh, readingsbyphyllis.com. Right. And we'll put there. the other information on the Let's yeah. Talk Facebook, Facebook page. page. Mm -hmm. The Let's Talk, I thought about this today. Let's mm -hmm. Talk WDVR WDVR Facebook page, Facebook page, Facebook page right. to find us because yes. there are a few mm -hmm. Let's Talk pages on there. But we'll get all yeah. this information in about Phyllis's mm -hmm. class coming up and the right. charity event. All right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and one last thing I just wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. Because this is such a strange journey and it happened to me very late in life, mm. I feel very compelled that um, I'm writing a book. I'm in the process of oh, writing right, a book right. about it. That's exciting. Um, just kind of let people know of the journey I start to take. And, um, you know, um, I feel I'm a late bloomer. So uh, I want to mention that. And I, I just want to talk about, too, about people just need to um, be who they are. Um, don't mm. be so afraid. You know, I'm an accountant, but, um, you know, I... I have these abilities too, so mm -hmm. uh, so don't resist. You know, right? Don't resist. Yeah, just um, roll you know, with it. Roll with right. it, and, and really uh, be just uh, who you are. And so you have to come back when your book comes out. We'd, oh, I would yeah, love we'd to. We'd be happy to talk more about it, right, Andy? Yes. Oh, definitely. Uh, yes. I would love to. Mm -hmm. And people should be more open to it. Uh, yeah. To you know, yeah. Someone who has a gift like that—that's been. Proven that, you know, I mean, to me, I know that. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> she, yeah. made, she made a believer out of you. Oh, out of Andy, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of was early uh, yeah. because of some other things that happened right. like years ago. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, some people don't see sometimes the signs that are right there. Yes. But, uh, mm. That's true. Good okay. stuff. Thank you, Phyllis Mitchell.